Caramel Bird. Your sensors are correct. Do not adjust your heading. Your heading. You've discovered the Omega Particle. Streaming to the Alpha Quadrant and beyond. 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 Here's your host. The anchorman of the Federation. The doctor of Dilithium. This is Jonathan Wiegand. Yes, and welcome to this first episode review of the Omega Particle. I'm very happy to be here. I'm your host, Jonathan Weekend, and we are once again going on an excursion into podcasting excellence. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're in the middle of our con series. So we're going to do something just a little bit, change of pace. We're going to do a episode review of Picard. Episode 5, Stardust City Rag. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, wait a minute, why are you doing Episode 5? Why not go back and do the first four episodes? Now, that's a very valid question. That is a great question. My wife actually posed that to me. She's like, why are you doing 5 instead of 1 through 4? And the reason is, is because when we created this podcast, there, there was already two or three episodes already out. So it felt kind of to go backtrack and they're already month old, maybe a month and a half old. So it's like, okay, so we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to talk about things that probably people have already listened to reviews on and people have already like gone over a bunch, maybe even watched multiple times. So we're just going to hit the ground running and go with new episodes and we might do more episode reviews if you guys want to, or if you guys like it, please send feedback to us. Our Instagram name is Omega Particle Podcast. So feel free to message us. I'm on there every day, posting and reviewing and talking to you guys. So please feel free to reach out and let me know if you want to do more episode reviews or if you guys are just want to stick to kind of storylines and just interesting things about Trek and news about Trek. Now, as we get into Picard episode five, I want to cover one thing. I know the very introduction episode, I mentioned that we wouldn't be doing a whole series episodic reviews. Now, what I meant by that was we wouldn't be doing like a Deep Space Nine, we wouldn't be doing a Voyager, wouldn't be doing a TNG complete series run simply because they're 20 plus years old. We've already seen them. However, for the new stuff, I am debating and thinking, hey, this might be fun. And it may just be because episode five was so good and I loved it. Hey, let's do some reviews and and probably kind of a more relaxed fit episode. So not as much in-depth, deep dives as our normal episodes. We'll kind of just relax fit. We're all having fun. So getting into the episode. First off, Jonathan Franks directs it. Yes, number one himself directs it. And he's done a great job directing other Star Trek movies and episodes in like Enterprise, and I think he's done Voyager and a couple of other, maybe even to Deep Space Nine, I'm not for sure. So basically the synopsis of this episode is that they've tracked Bruce Mattis to a place called Free Cloud, and they need to get him back. And as they learn, he's actually captured by, like I think it's like this drug dealer that goes by Jay. And this is when we first see Seven of Nine. Now I, for one was super excited when they announced that Jerry Ryan would be returning as seven simply because she has one of the best character arcs in all of Star Trek. And I know a lot of people out there haven't seen Voyager, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend watching Voyager. Maybe skip the first two or three seasons because it's just, yeah, it's not the best track. It definitely does build a lot of good character arcs and storylines that eventually come to fruition in later seasons of Voyager. So check out Voyager if you want to know more about Seven of Nine. And we may even do a deep dive of Seven of Nine. So Seven is a freedom fighter for this group called the Frenus Rangers. So personally, I really enjoyed seeing Seven again. I mean, Jerry Ryan hit it out of the ballpark. I thought it was amazing. And even with the very first scene where we see poor Ichup get taken out, which was really sad because I love that they brought him in. I wish we could see more of him, but I mean, 
it, it does give them a very good opportunity to show Seven's emotional range because in, as in Voyager, she struggled with her emotions. She struggled with processing humanity. So to see her call each up her kin, her, it was like a son to her and then cry and grieve over him. It's a great, without saying a lot, showing how far she's come if you've known Seven's character. But also motivate her actions as we see later on with Jay in the episode. Now, I know a lot of people out there are upset with this episode. They say it's boring, a waste of time, it's backstory, it doesn't really move the plot forward, it's confusing, it's just trying to be zig and zag for no reason at all. And I just have to completely, completely, completely disagree with those people. I think it's an amazing episode. I think it's great. I think it definitely shows a great backstory, which is nice in centric character series like Picard, because it allows the limelight to be off of him and show other sides of him, which which we saw his goofy side of his bad acting and that Sir Patrick Stewart tried to pass off. So I, I personally love that the silliness of it we haven't really seen since TNG. So for me, I, I enjoyed the episode. I think it was great. It's probably my favorite episode so far of Picard because there's so many yeah moments in it, and we'll cover those coming up. Going into Free Cloud, this is a little tidbit and a little Easter egg. I don't know if you saw as like Rio beams down. There's actually in the background, there's a Quark's bar sign, which I absolutely freaked out over because DS9 is my favorite Star Trek series. So to see that Quark actually ended up franchising his bar. I, I just love that. So it was it was a cool little tip of the cap to the hardcore trekkers out there. And I love that the writers are paying that to people that, like, for example, my wife would have never paid attention to, but for me, it just made the episode even better. Even Rio mentions him as he beams down. He's like, Quark of Ferenginar in the bar. So I was like, oh, that's great. So there's two nods to Quark so far in this episode, which I really enjoyed and I thought that was really cool. So as they go into this bar, they realize that Jay has Bruce Maddox. And if you're wondering, no, it is not the same guy that played Bruce Maddox in the two TNG episodes. I'm sorry, the one TNG episode, which was Measure of a Man, which is probably one of the best Star Trek episodes of all time. I think it's in season two. And then also Data's Day, he's mentioned a lot, but he's not actually seen. But he's not actually the same actor from the TNG series. So I actually looked that up while I was watching because I was curious i was like oh do they bring this guy back he's fully bearded and it's been like 20 some odd years so we really have no, no idea if it's him but it is not in case you were wondering so as they barter for maddox and like the tide turns and they they get um guns on jay and they kind of go after her i really loved how jay called seven annika because that's another kind of fill in the gap of what happened when she returned to earth did she go by Annika? Did she try to become more human? Did she try to embrace her humanity instead of going by seven? And so for me, I was, I like that. Or maybe it was a show of a sign of intimacy, which I don't know how you want to read into that. Either way, it was a very well acted scene. I personally loved it. And especially how they per- portrayed the like casino darker kind of Star Trek. I really like that. And it made me feel a lot better than what they did like in Cantina Nights than in Star Wars The Last Jedi when it was just kind of like lightly overshadowed and they really didn't go into like the dark aspect of it. So through going back and forth and getting control of the guns and taking out the bad guys from Jay, they decide to go up into the ship and they rescue Maddox and they get Seven and and Seven is about to commit like revenge because she's mad because Jay is the one that killed Icheb. Seven wants to beam down to take Jay out, <laughs> pretty much. But I definitely loved, absolutely adored the quick conversation between Picard and Seven because these are the only two major Trek characters that have been assimilated by the Borg and have lived to tell the tale and they've come back. In case you ever need a vigilante. Thank you. After they brought you back from your time in the collective, do you 
honestly feel that you regained your humanity? Yes. All of it? No. But we're both working on it. I've been waiting for this conversation and I wish they strung it out more, but maybe they will in future episodes of the, hopefully the writers are just giving us a little taste and maybe there's more to come, but I, I definitely appreciated it and the, the nod to it. So seven's beaming down. I don't know if you heard this is another Easter egg. They actually play the OG Voyager theme as she goes down. And it made me think when I was watching, where is everybody else? Where is Chakotay? Where's Tom Paris? Uh, probably Harry Kim's probably still an ensign out there somewhere. I was just, I was like, man, I would actually love to, whether it's like a comic book series or if they like, maybe like a mini series, I would love to see what happened to the people of Voyager. Like, I think it'd be a cool series to do, but you can make that argue with DS9 and a lot of other a lot of other Trek shows, but hearing that OG music definitely warmed my heart and it was great fan service. So when Picard is talking to seven before she goes down, before she beams down, he says like, Hey, revenge is not something that's great. You can't chase it. It's not going to satisfy anything. And then it made me think, do you know what? Picard knows what he's talking about because all the first contact, he was trying to get revenge on the Borg, trying to kind of repay them for stealing his humanity. I didn't mean to interrupt your little quest. Captain Ahab has to go hunt his whale. What? You do have books in the 24th century. This is not about revenge. Liar! This is about saving the future of humanity! John, look, blow up the damn ship! No! No! Yeah, he's still working on it. It's a day-to-day process. So I love the little tidbit of advice that obviously Seven does not take. She takes Jay out. And I was kind of surprised by that. That was a surprise move. But again, it's showing how far she's come since when we saw her on Voyager. And real quick, subplot of Rafi and her son and and all of that. Like, I just really don't. I don't know. I know. I don't know if it's the writer's trying to just show us this isn't your grandfather's trek because there's like space heroin and there's vaping and there's and fractured relationships and I don't I don't know if they're trying to show us like the the effects of having a career over family and how the broken relationships like Picard's living with some Romulans he's not re- really living with family and then like Rafi doesn't have a son I don't know if it's that or if they're just trying to show it more real kind of Star Trek. I really don't care for it. That's the only fault I have in the episode, but still it's very well acted and very well written. Okay. So the big mystery plot is Agnes is a double agent. Maybe is a double agent for the Romulans or for section 31. I really don't know, but (laughs) she takes out Bruce Maddox. First off, why, why would you hide that you're in a relationship from everybody? So as Agnes is like taking Maddox out, she's like, you don't know what they've shown me. And it made me think back a few episodes, like you had Commodore O come out and she's talking to Agnes and it's like, maybe she showed her something. Maybe it's the danger of AI. Now we're getting into theory territory here. So if you have any theories, remember, hit us up on Instagram at Omega Particle Podcast, or you can email us at Omega Particle Podcast at gmail.com. But so my theory is maybe 
Commodore Ho showed something to Agnes, made her see how bad AI will be in the future. I mean, what's that Romulan lady say in the mental institution to to Raj? Like, you're the destroyer of worlds. So maybe there is something to that. Maybe maybe AI is bad and and Agnes is trying to to work with Section 31. I would love if there's a Section 31 tie-in. That'd be really cool. And it would really set up the Section 31 show, which has been announced and has been announced for about, I think, maybe like six months or a year. However, I know a lot of criticism of the show has been because it's zigs and zags and it's kind of confusing and the plot's kind of all over the place. However, it's a mystery show, y'all. Like, calm down. It's going to have little tidbits here and there. It's not going to be straight out Star Trek. You have an adventure and it's closed up by the end of the episode and you move on. Like, I think maybe maybe they're building a bigger world. I mean, the Section 31 show definitely makes me think that. Like, maybe they're building something more where it's kind of all interconnected. Maybe they're trying to do this MCU thing, which I would personally love. And that would be cool. Again, if you have theories, let us know. So it's a serial mystery, and we're just going to have to see where it goes. And I, for one, am very excited. It's a great time to be a Star Trek fan. And I'm no way complaining. So to wrap it up, yes, this was an amazing show. I definitely loved and can't wait to see where they bring Seven in again. She gave Picard that little uh, symbol or tracker thing to be like, hey, call me if you need me. So I definitely think we'll see her again somewhere in some way. But um, for now, I, I liked how they brought her back and they kind of expanded her character and even brought in a little Voyager love with each of So moving on to the news of Star Trek. I know we have a lot of California listeners out there. However, if you are in or close to the Los Angeles region, please take note that there is going to be an exhibit called Star Trek Exploring Worlds at the Skirballs Cultural Center. It seems like a really awesome exhibit. There's going to be over 100 rare artifacts plus other artifacts. And the ones that definitely jump out to me are Captain Kirk's OS chair and a Deep Space Nine model, which is kind of on my bucket list to see a Deep Space Nine station model. But that will be between April 30th and September 6th. So I definitely check that out if you're in the L.A. region. It seems like it's going to be a real hit. Also, this was just broke this week. This is February, I think, 25th. And when I'm recording this. And there are going to be two new Star Trek shows. So in addition to what we've already known and been announced. So there's going to be Lower Decks, which is a Nickelodeon kids show. There's going to be Section 31. And we have, of course, we have Picard and Discovery. But one of those two shows has been announced is about Captain Pike and the Enterprise, which I think is an amazing concept. I love Captain Pike so far. He's probably one of my favorite captains. And I love how they're expanding his character. And I would love to see more of him on the Enterprise. Would they modernize the Enterprise? Would they be the, like the OS series? I don't know, but I would definitely love to see where they're going to go with that and maybe see some of the adventures before Kirk. So as we really wrap up today, I just want to say thank you for all your support and listening. And remember to rate, subscribe, and comment on every platform. I think right now we're on Spotify, Apple, and Google Play. Probably go out to a couple more platforms, but I'll let you know as we do that. We're also on Instagram at Omega Particle Podcast. And if you want to send us an email, we're Omega Particle Podcast at gmail.com. Please rate, subscribe, and review. They are critical to new little podcasts like me. And I would definitely, definitely appreciate it. Uh, again, we're going to be working on Con, hopefully, to get that episode out, maybe this Friday or Saturday. And I would love to finish that series up as I'm reading up. It's going to be really exciting to see how Con goes from this revolutionary to getting forced on the botany bay again really appreciate all your support and remember second start of the right straight on till morning 